Hello, I'm Nicole Nichols, and this is City Critters. Welcome to City Critters. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Now, that's a phrase you might often hear from any one of the regular volunteer fosters at Nevada Humane Society. But what time of year am I talking about? Kitten season, of course. And yes, you did hear me correctly. There is a season dedicated specifically to kittens. It's that time of year when kittens by the thousands are seen entering shelters throughout the United States. So why then is this the most wonderful time of the year? Well, for fosters, it's the time of year when they are needed the most. It's the time of year when they get to play with a continual stream of kittens. And it's the time of year when so many lives are saved. When we come back, we'll talk about kitten season and why foster homes are so desperately needed. Abandoned and lost. From the dark, cold streets of the city to a cage in the local shelter to heaven, your lap. Kitten season. It's the time of year that makes people serving as foster homes squeal with glee and shelter workers breathe a heavy sigh. Generally, kitten season will run from mid-March through late November. During this time, Nevada Humane Society will see dozens of litters of kittens brought to the shelter every day. At the height of kitten season, July, August, September, there could be anywhere between four and 500 kittens at a time needing foster care. So where do all these kittens go? Well, that's where foster homes become so very important. Typically, most shelters are not able to handle the large influx of kittens that come to the shelter during these months. In most traditional shelter environments, these kittens simply would be killed for lack of resources. But at Nevada Humane Society, instead, we rely heavily on our foster homes. In 2010, 2,563 animals were placed in temporary foster home. That's 2,500 lives that were saved. And that's the same 2,500 lives that would have been lost if it weren't for foster homes. So how does it work? Kittens are placed in a temporary foster home until they are big enough to go through the spay-neuter surgery. They need to be two pounds for the surgery which is generally around the eight week mark. So however long you have them in your home depends on how old they are when you get them. We have pre-wean kittens that need to be bottle fed every couple of hours to moms with their very own litters of kittens to weaned kittens who only need a few weeks of time to grow. But one of the wonderful benefits of fostering is that you will always have cute, cuddly kittens to love, play with, and enjoy. When we come back, we'll speak directly with one of Nevada Humane Society's foster homes and learn why fostering kittens is such a great thing to do. Life's funny. I never thought I'd end up at a shelter. But then again, neither did you. Life's funny. Welcome back to City Critters. Kittens, they're cute, they're cuddly, and soon they'll be everywhere. And that's why we need fosters so desperately. But don't be fooled. I think most fosters would say that fostering kittens is a lot more play than it is work. And with us today is a longtime foster for Nevada Humane Society, Kari Riley, who is gonna talk about just that. How are you doing, Kari? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on today. Oh, it's great to have you. Um, first, tell me, you've got a little cute, cuddly thing in your hands right now. I tell me sure a little bit about do. this guy. This guy, um, this is Leo, and Leo is about two months old. 
He's one of our kittens that was in one of our, our foster homes. Um, received a lot of loving care over that time and is now back here in the shelter. Is um, neutered and microchipped and ready to find a new home. Oh, that's great. He is very cute. Yeah, he's a cutie. Huh. Well, Kari, how long have you been a foster? This is going into my third foster season. Oh, so that's quite, quite a while. Yes. Okay. How many kittens would you say during that period of time you fostered? Well, if I really had to put myself to a number, I would say it would probably be 30 to 50 kittens. 30 to 50 kittens. Yeah, sometimes you're going to do just singles or sometimes you'll do multiples. Um, and so the numbers can pretty much get, it, get up there with these little guys. I'm, I've, I've also had the opportunity to foster some puppies. And if you've even gotten oh. my family recruited and they recently fostered some rats. Oh, so so cats, puppies, and rats yes, in the family. Yes. Oh, that's exciting. So there's lots of opportunities to foster. A absolutely, there's lots and lots of opportunities. But from what I understand, probably the greatest need for fosters is kittens. Absolutely, we do absolutely get a, a lot of kittens in. A lot of these guys are too young to adopt, um, and so um, you know, fosters like me can come along and give these guys a nice loving home until they're old enough to find their own permanent loving home. Well, what made you decide? to start fostering? Well, needless to say, they're pretty cute. <laughs> well, that's for sure. Yeah, and um, you know, definitely the cuteness factor helps you do that too, but really I decided to foster because I really just felt such a need to um, provide loving care for these guys and you get such a sense of satisfaction and really they just bring you so much joy and um, at the same time while you're just making them safe um, for, for the short term so that they can uh, grow up and find their forever home. So the first time you brought some fosters home, yes. were you nervous? Were you afraid something might happen? Well, I, I mean I think initially you kind of are because of these tiny little lives and you're there, you know, trying to um, give them a, a big step up on life but the really great thing is I was very well supported Nevada Humane Society has a great foster team mm -hmm. who trains you gives you all the tools you need going out the door even if you've never you know fostered before um, and they always have um, you know somebody here on staff that you can call and talk to about it and they also have an after hours emergency line should something happen after hours um, that you feel might need the uh, attention um, that won't wait until morning so it sounds like you get a lot of of support, a lot of training. Absolutely you do and you really, um, you know, I just say, I just can't say enough about the ongoing support. It's always very helpful um, that if you have questions, um, the staff can certainly help you. And just being part of this program, you meet other fosters too, so you can actually have the opportunity to spend uh, some time with them, talk to them, and to learn from them too. Uh, what would you say is the best part about being a foster? I just have to say the reason probably why I continue doing it year after year is I personally just get such a sense of satisfaction of seeing these tiny lives change and grow while in my care and um, you know you get to see a tiny creature turn into um, a young cat and then you have the satisfaction of knowing it's coming back here to Nevada Humane Society and that animal is going to find a great home and I just feel like it's a win-win for everybody and I almost feel like I kind of get more satisfaction out of it um, you know than, than the, probably the animals do although they really do appreciate everything that you do. Yeah. Not forget all the playtime you get. I think um, to look at a young animal and to not feel the incredible joy that they bring to your life by their crazy annex, you know, it's just one of the really, one of the best things that, that you can have. And, and um, yeah, needless to say, the playtime's a big part of it too. So if there's one thing that you would like to share with anyone out there who might be considering fostering, what would that be? You know, I would say do it. Um, you have you have so much to gain by helping a, a you know a little life and it gives you such a sense of satisfaction and really being part of something bigger than you are and um, to see the little guys grow up in your care and then um, to really feel you know the joy of having them around and the satisfaction of knowing that you've been part of finding an animal a great home and actually one of the greatest things is being part of um, you know a solution uh, to no kill which is one of the great things about um, our uh, local Nevada Humane Society shelter. Kari thank you so much for being with us today and for showing us little Leo and sharing your experiences with us. It has been uh, mine and Leo's pleasure thank you. Thank you so very much. 
So there you have it. Fostering can be a lot of fun. If you're interested, uh, please give us a call at Nevada Humane Society, 856-2000. Next up, Nevada Humane Society news. Hope you'll stay with us. Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Maybe you should go to your shelter and get a mature dog. Who will make your blues disappear? How's that for tricks? I got picked. Wow. Welcome back, and now it's time for Nevada Humane Society news. Earlier this month, staff at Nevada Humane Society received a call from a shelter in Portland, Oregon. They had picked up a stray cat wandering the streets of Portland and brought it into their shelter. When they scanned it for a microchip, they discovered that the cat, named Squeakers, actually had an owner. Turns out, the owner, living in Reno, Nevada, had adopted Squeakers from Nevada Humane Society several years ago. Two years ago, Squeakers went missing. The owner searched for Squeakers for several months and finally decided he wasn't coming home. Now, two years later and several miles apart, Squeakers and his owner have been reunited. We don't know how Squeakers made it all the way to Portland, Oregon, but we're sure glad he made his way back. Nevada Humane Society has gone exotic. And by exotics, I'm talking about sugar gliders. Nevada Humane Society had a pair of sugar gliders available for adoption. Now, if you don't know what a sugar glider is, they're about the size of a hamster, they're marsupials, and as their name implies, they also glide. It's pretty rare for such exotic animals to wind up at a shelter but these two are now enjoying their new life in their new home. Save the date. On Saturday, April 16th, Nevada Humane Society will host a kitten shower and foster information se session. Kitten shower, it's like a baby shower, only for kittens. So come on down, bring your gifts for the kittens, play some games, meet some adorable, cute, fuzzy kittens, and have a great time. And if you're considering becoming a foster home, this is a great chance for you to learn right from the veteran foster homes what it's like and how you can become one. Hope to see you there. And that's all for this edition of Nevada Humane Society News. At Nevada Humane Society, we get really excited about adoptions. After all, that's why we're here. But we don't often get to hear the story after the adoptions. So today I'm going to share with you some of Nevada Humane Society adoption success stories. Max was recently adopted and he writes, just wanted to thank you all for caring for me until the Browns adopted me. I'm very, very happy in my new home. I love being around the family, following them from room to room. There's lots of love here and I am one lucky cat to have found a home. Taya, formerly known as Gina, was adopted in December of 2010 as a six-month-old pit mix puppy. Her new people have renamed her Taya, Native American for precious, and says she's actually a plot hound shepherd mix. They say she's the biggest pussycat you could ever know, and she has helped with the rehab of two of their other foster dogs. Her family says she's excellent around children and people of all ages, and around all dogs. She's a real sweetheart, and we have no regrets with adding her to our family. Taya and her family say, thank you for doing what you do for the animals. Without you, we may never have found Taya and had the joy and love she's brought to us. This is Dexter, recently adopted, and according to his new family, doing great. His family says Dex, his kitty sibling, and even the family guinea pig all get along fine. Dexter has a lot of energy and does not let his wobbly back legs bother him, running around the entire apartment with no problem at all. They say he's extremely playful and happy, and that they are ha very happy to have added him to their family. This photo shows him and Maddie, and the other with Grizz, the guinea pig. Now this is a great story. See, normally, we hear of fosters keeping the kittens, but not the mama thanks to the Canzini family. They say, 
We're fosters for the Nevada Humane Society, and last fall we're asked to take in a mama and her five 10-day-old kittens. So we did, and we fell in love with all of them after the two months that they were in our home. Three were adopted even before we got them to back to the shelter, but we knew if we gave up mama, she would get lost in the flurry of cats at the shelter. So we decided to keep her. Lily, short for Tiger Lily, is the coolest cat ever. She loves all dogs and we swear she's part dog too. We love Lily and NHS. Thanks for all you do. That's all for today's episode of City Critters. We hope that you learned a lot about becoming a foster home and hope to see you down here very soon. Thanks for joining us.